everyone. My name is Justin Small, and I am the host of The Data Swamp, bringing it to you uh, today to talk about some of the biggest, ugliest challenges that organizations face with their data. Um, and we're sponsored by Tesh Global. I work for Tesh Global. Um, just a disclaimer there. And, and then joining me as well is our co-host, Wayne Cantwell. So, hey, Wayne, you online? How's it going? Just fine. How are you today, Justin? I'm doing awesome. Yeah, I'm excited Good. for this topic. So this is our inaugural episode, and we're going to be talking about problems that organizations have with data. Um, I think that's going to kind of be a running theme throughout the whole podcast, but this will be a good one to kick off kind of what we see as the biggest, baddest, ugliest problems and, and kind of starting to talk about some of the solutions we see for them. Right, Wayne? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think what we're going to do is we're going to uncover a lot of the data fallacies, a lot of the data issues that are out there. And so this is a great form. I'm looking forward to kind of uh, really digging in and figuring out what we can do to help folks by looking at things a little bit differently and uh, coming up with some solutions. So great form to do this. Uh, looking really uh, uh, good and plentiful when it when it comes to data. There's plenty to talk about. So let's dig in. Absolutely. And uh, I think before we do that, we're just going to have to have a quick word from our sponsor, Tesh Global, uh, just to kick off each podcast, right? Because uh, I'm really thankful that they're kind of helping make all this happen for us. So um, like I said, Tesh Global uh, is a company I work for, and they are a data management professional services firm with focused expertise on the most challenging, ugly problems in the modern data integration enterprise analytics, and software development space. So uh, Tesh Global is dedicated to solving customers' emerging digital transformation challenges by acting as change agents who help bridge the gap between business and IT operations through alignment of strategy and digital technology. We're committed to revolutionizing the way organizations manage and utilize business data through best-in-class implementation services of modern technology tools and repeatable methodologies that automate processes while enabling full insight into operations. By deploying a specialized team of software engineers and strategists, we provide delivery of digital transformation solutions, which include customized application development and data management solutions, creating efficient, data-driven organizations worldwide. We have extensive experience in the areas of enterprise integration, enterprise business intelligence and analytics, and software application development in a variety of industries, including healthcare, manufacturing, supply chain, retail, insurance, and more. And Tesh Global is headquartered in Grafton, Wisconsin, and has offices in Boise, Idaho, Mexico City, Mexico, and Amsterdam, Netherlands. For more information, visit www.teshglobal.com. Sweet. So, and uh, you have a relationship with Tesh Global as well, not just through me, right, Wayne? But kind of going back a little ways. Absolutely. Uh, Tesh Global has been a, a great firm to actually solve so many data issues when it comes to integration and actually developing data. So my background is of a technical nature, and I pretty much do business intelligence development, meaning I build applications with data. And so uh, the relationship is just a natural one. I've done so many projects uh, for and with Tesh Global uh, in order to actually provide value to the customer from a business intelligence aspect. And uh, it's really fun to do this podcast because I think we're going to actually – uh, reveal some of the things that most folks are dealing with when it comes to building applications, integrating data, and actually bringing value to their clients. And this is important. So I think this is going to be a great podcast and a great series. And we'll talk about some of those experiences I've had directly. Sweet. Yeah, cool stuff. So I, I guess, uh, Wayne, where my mind immediately goes kind of as we're kicking this off is, you know, the, the whole rise of the data problems <laughs> we're, that we're going to be talking about really come from the fact that, you know, I think we work in an increasingly data centric world, right? You got managers who are you know, asking for reports or, or looking at dashboards and different systems 
and we're you know kind of regularly reminded to make data driven decisions. I think you know senior leaders are kind of salivating at the words big data, <laughs> and 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 really uh, salivating at the competitive edge that big data has promised, right? And yet, I think still most of us kind of are struggling to uh, agree on what that is, or or really see um, tangible benefits from it, right? Yeah, I, I think you've hit on a couple great key points, and that's really. What is data used for? How do we use data? Because I think that as an individual, we've all got, you know, devices nowadays like our phones, our tablets, um, and our PCs that pretty much allow us to access data. And on the flip side of that is so do businesses, right? Um, It's really a matter of your paradigm and how you're viewing this data. But boy, because there's so much data out there being collected, uh, being used from corporations and individuals, how do you make sense of that? And so I think this is a great opportunity for us to kind of look at those different paradigms and see how we can bring value um, to both sides. Let's understand uh, what the individual's responsibility and role is with data, along with uh, the corporations and governments, right? How do they actually use this data And uh, what are the challenges when you're talking about dealing with so much data? Yeah, it reminds me immediately of the, I guess, shortfalls that I've been seeing that are kind of projected uh, around the data scientist, right? So they've, they've kind of made the whole data space very sexy. And then in addition to that, have, uh, have been the ones that have kind of been working with the big data uh, aspect in the first place, right? So it seems to me like organizations are starting to spend more and more every year uh, just on software, right, that captures and stores and analyzes data. It seems like even, you know, if you look at marketing departments, they're kind of increasingly filled with these technical kind of data-savvy professionals, uh, even at the expense of more of the creative roles that have traditionally been uh, associated with marketing. And, um, you know, just the world of of business is is data-focused, right? It's really data-focused right now. Uh, But I don't think uh, everyone has realized yet that data isn't an end into itself, right? Like everything else we use to do our work, data is a tool, right? And in the right hands uh, with the right approach, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, I think you make uh, some great points in terms of, you know, how are we using that data? I do believe that data is very much like accounting, where you can make the numbers look good and you can make the numbers look bad, all depending on your paradigm. How are you actually looking at this data uh, can actually change the outcome of how you use the data. So one of the things that's really interesting um, and and let, let's talk about the 8,000 pound gorilla. It's the internet, right? right? The internet has changed everything. It's changed how businesses use data, how individuals use data. So because of the internet, we're able to capture a lot more data, uh, than we've ever been able to before. And businesses subsequently can use that data. And one of the things you mentioned that I think is really key, and it's one of the sexy components is marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We have so much data about individuals, um, which for a business are customers, right? And so as these customers, whether they're uh, individual people or business entities, allowing companies to actually look at this data in different ways brings so much value. And I think that's the real uh, catch-all that most business owners, uh, business investors are really focusing on because there are huge advantages that you can take in the market when you start to understand this data. So I do think that's a key role uh, of our job is to actually let's make that come to life. It, It all sounds good on paper and yeah, let's figure out who does what, where and when. Um, but trying to actually uh, bring that to fruition and make decisions, really good business decisions off of data, because there's a process of turning data into information, 
into specific decision making KPIs. Uh, that's key performance indicators, right? Mm-hmm. Um, those are the steps that are required, and uh, that's exactly what we do. And and I think that's what's changing now. That entire process, right? Well, and I think um, it's good stuff. And and I'm thinking also, you know, th- that promise <laughs> of of data really working for you, right? Uh, I think part part of what we want to dive into here too is kind of rubbing some of the polish off that idea, right? That that there's a little bit of uh there are these pitfalls, right? That kind of pop up um even though data is this promising new resource that that is kind of presented to us, right? So, I don't know, I I was going to uh try diving into that and actually ask you right away, Wayne. You know, we we've, we've written out some of the biggest issues we have seen here with data. Um, and or, problems that organizations face with it. Um, first one, and I think probably the biggest one, is poor data quality, right? So what do you think about that? You want to talk to that? Um, sure. I, I think there's a, 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 a better understanding of data quality from a user perspective. <laughs> if yeah. you've ever gone into a, you know, a hospital or you know, uh, Department of Motor Vehicles, or any entity that's collecting your data, um, credit, right, and it's wrong, mm. you immediately start to understand the value of data quality, right? <laughs> so Absolutely. in the real live world, we as individuals deal with companies who have bad data, <laughs> and we notice it right away, we understand it, and we see the impact. Well, these things are kind of rolled up on a grand, uh, you know, grand scale when you're talking about companies, because they've de- they've dealt with millions of customers, which means billions of records, and if that data gets rolled up and it is not of quality, then the the, the decisions made on that data really suffer, uh, and so therefore it's really key. Um, to kind of concentrate on that, let, let, let's uh, really, you know, make sure that if we're going to make decisions off of this data, it better be the right data. It better be actually accurate, right, uh, at a granular level so that those decisions made uh, on a larger scale are actually making sense, which ultimately makes more dollars. So data quality is a huge uh, component of data when you're talking about not just reading that data, but even integrating it. So if you've got you know, companies out there that are sharing data and that data has different values for the same entity, um, that becomes a problem. And so these are some of the challenges that we really face in the real world of development that a lot of folks uh, at, at, at times will overlook. And because of that, their business suffers from it. So this is something that, as a company, uh, I think folks should really start to pay more attention to, and it gets us away from just the plain sexy aspect of, let's just turn data into information, and now we're going right. to make a lot of money. There's mm-hmm. a few steps in between there, and data quality is one of them. Definitely. And I think, just in my mind, with data quality... You know, if I would just think about quality in general, right? I think your point is great. It's it's easier for the user to understand that. And I think it's easier for us to think about it also in terms of physical objects, right? Or products. Um, you know, but uh, but data quality really is a material issue, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, data is, you know, it's it's stored in structured databases or kind of in a repository, and while it's there, if it's incomplete or inconsistent or out of date, you know, you're likely as a user going to be on the receiving end of, uh, you know, even just a simple example of data quality um, being being poor, right? I mean, I, I think all of us can sort of relate and I can remember times that I've received like duplicate things in the mail from people who are marketing to me, right? And maybe they're addressed slightly differently or or there's actually like a radically different version of my actual name on there, right? And and uh, 
that probably points back to the marketer's database, right? That it has somehow duplicate records with my address or, uh, you know, an erroneous spelling of my name. And, you know, I just throw that stuff right into the junk mail. Exactly. Like, you know, and I think the marketer, as soon as I do that, has this extra cost in the form of printing and mailing stuff, you know, all due to kind of a data quality issue. And if you amplify that mistake by a bunch of records, you know, that can be a really costly mistake. And, uh, you know, just putting it out there, I throw most of the mail I get in the junk mail. So, you know, if you're marketing to me via mail, you might save some money just by not, <laughs> not, not doing that period. <laughs> No, that, 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 that's a great point. Uh, I'll share a funny one with you. Uh, a couple years back, I got an email that says, Wayne, how would you like breast enhancement? Right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> not, not something that, uh, that I'm really looking for, but it, it gives you a great example. Um, you know, funny one, but great example of how, you know, folks aren't really cleansing the data and ensuring that, um, you know, the right information is going to the right people. Because yeah, I'm surprised at, that at, Google's spam filter didn't catch that one, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it it's a it's a key issue that um, a lot of folks are are recognizing after the fact, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like like so many data issues, uh, they they tend to be caught by the customer on on the back end, and uh, mm -hmm. these are some things that happen all the time but if you if you've got a good data process and plan it may happen um but what what what's really key is that you're gonna have things fall through the crack but what i think is very important when it comes to dealing with data is setting up processes and frameworks that allow you to correct these types of issues so the next time it goes through the cycle these things get addressed and so that's what's really important about some of the things we're talking about today is developing those processes. And uh, that has to be something um, that becomes a priority in your organization. And without it, you're going to have a lot of folks getting uh, breast enhancements that probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully they don't all go through with it. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, I think it really is an important issue, you know, and as we're like, I, you know, like you've said, as we're, Kind of trying to make decisions and and uh, on on what you know a strategy is for our business or you know what what's out there in the market or how to market to people kind of in real time, um, you know <clears throat> there are software and solutions out there that exist to kind of help monitor and improve the quality of of data. One one that I can think of is a tool called Quilliup, and um, <clears throat> but I think even with those tools. You know, they're not going to do you any good if there's not a real uh, significant organization-wide commitment to treating data as an asset, right? And in practice, that's just extremely difficult to achieve, and it really requires a lot of discipline and support from leadership. Yeah, you're, you're, you're definitely spot on there. Um, I, I really see that uh, data is this thing, and how you use the thing uh, depends on you. It's it's very similar to cars. Um, cars really don't get you from point A to B. Um, they can be used if you know where A is at and you know where B is at, and you drive that vehicle from point A to point B because you know those starting points and destinations. Um, it can work. But a car just sitting outside is not going to know where point A or point B is um, without you kind of, you know, dictating the rules. And I think that's how data is. Data is always there. There's tons of it. Um, and people look, you know, people will collect it. Um, but what to do with it? What is your actual objective um, with the data? Uh, that becomes actually more important uh, than the data itself. You really need to have a vision and an idea of what you're looking to do with that data. And each company is different. Each company may use the same slice of data, but for different uh, reasons. They, they've got KPIs that are different for the same source of data. And so that's why it's important to understand what is that vision for each company 
and then allow the data, the car to get you there. And I mm -hmm. think with that type of perspective, then data is actually very useful. Without it, uh, a lot of folks just have data and not information. Yeah. Yeah. Putting, putting the vision first, right? So I'm looking at the list of things uh, that we put down and one thing you put down was variety of data. How, how do you think, Wayne, that the greater variety of data we have is, has become a problem for organizations? Well, this is great because a uh, variety of data has changed over the years. Oh boy, um, you know, being involved with data for 20 plus years, um, and that's just a drop in, in the bucket, to be honest. I, I've watched it kind of evolve over just that, you know, that short period of time. But now what I'm seeing and what's happening out there in the industry is that data itself is changing. The format of data is changing. So everything was at, at one point in time uh, tabular, meaning column and rows, right? Mm. Uh, co column uh, of data was basically collected on various rows of people. Um, and that, that data was then used to facilitate those people's needs. That's really how the computer was um, really thought about as a tool. The computer was used to manipulate these columns and rows of data. Um, and so now you have email, now you have social media, now we have the internet. And so there's data sources that don't have that same structure. So when people talk about big data, it consists of the three V's. I, I talk about this often, you know, volume, velocity, and that third one is what we're talking about here, variety. Um, just because you've got a lot of data doesn't mean you have big data. Um, there's, there's industries like manufacturing who have had the same data <laughs> for years and years mm. because they make widgets. And those widgets don't change much, and so the data doesn't change much. But once you introduce social media and the Internet to those companies, now they're talking about using different varieties of data with their manufacturing data. So now they get orders that come in a little bit differently than an invoice or a spreadsheet, right? Now that data comes in in the form of an email or in social media format, right? And so these are things that when it comes to actually manipulating data and using data efficiently, uh, I really think you've got to be on the ball being flexible, scalable with your data approach uh, in today's data-driven society. Because without having the understanding of the variety of data that's out there, it's very easy to paint yourself into a corner by using one tool, one data format, one presentation layer. I think it's very important to understand that there are many forms of data and they all require their own little bit of tender love and care. So uh, being aware <laughs> of that, you know, you can address it. Without it, you're going to be stuck. A little TLC. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I kind of think uh, just to even narrow it down... You want to talk about data being everywhere, even if you just think about one subject area, customer data, right? Um, you've got marketing, collecting data from people who, you know, attend these web events or who download content from a website. You've got executives using data to support, um, you know, the strategies they form. You've got sales collecting data about which customers are involved in the sales process. You've got customer support capturing data about you know what calls and chats they had you got you know the management team you know looking at key metrics for scorecards you got you know a bunch of customer data being used in accounting and billing uh and you know by you know the quality assurance and customer insights teams for you know monitoring kind of customer satisfaction and stuff so even there you just got this data kind of proliferating throughout the organization in a variety of different formats and 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 a whole bunch of different systems and you know different repositories i think 
you know, some of the companies uh, we've worked with have had, I would say, almost 10% of their customer data just held locally by employees on their computers and spreadsheets, right? And then, you know, there's another organization I can think of us working with that, you know, regularly asks their sales representatives for business card data before they run marketing campaigns just because their sales reps have all the data there. So it's it's when you talk about different formats, maybe it's not even electronic formats, but maybe it's just literally a physical business card that someone has that you're trying to figure out how to use, right? That's right. That's right. It's absolutely right. There's there's even uh, a need for capturing, you know, a, a recording, just like we're doing now. A lot of the data that's out there uh, comes from, actual audio devices, right? Your telephone, conversations, mm. all of the data formats that are out there are not only just uh, being shared and being used, but they're changing and evolving because of technology. It wasn't so easy to do dictation. You know, you, you probably think of dictation from either a lawyer or a doctor who has to file reports and these reports are always given in an interview type of fashion, especially in law. And so to record that conversation or a legal hearing onto a device electronically that then gets interpreted into text, gets interpreted into columnar data. Uh, right. Those are all things that are happening in the real world. And uh, it's changing. I mean, let's be honest. We we talk about HIPAA, right? Mm -hmm. um, HIPAA, you know, people don't realize that that was created, you know, back in 96, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, for those uh, who aren't aware, it's just health insurance, portability, uh, and accountability. It's a, it's, a, it's a way for folks to make sure that patient data uh, is kept private, okay? So these are, these are some of the things that, you know, data must be kept in a certain format, and so there's a variety encrypted data, right? Secure data. Um, and then we fast forward to, you know, just a couple years ago, uh, people are aware of uh, GDPR, right? Mm -hmm. General data uh, protection regulation. That's something that was established in Europe just a couple years ago, 2016. And it's become a standard. So these are some, you know, just simple examples of how the variety of data changes uh, and there's going to be more type of regulations. There's uh, more and more coming out. Um, some of it's good. Some of it's bad. It's uh, it's akin to uh, building a home, right? Sometimes people think, uh, you know, well, they, they build these houses so cheaply now. And <laughs> although the material is a little bit thinner, right, a little weaker, um, there are a lot better regulations around electricity, um, around plumbing. So now, yeah. you know, you can't just have any Joe Blow come in and set up your electricity. Um, so those, those are regulations and standards that help the housing development. And I think that's great. And the same thing is happening with data. A lot of people look at it from one perspective thinking, oh, it takes away my freedom or they're regulating this and they're regulating that which is absolutely true. But in some cases, maybe it's okay to have some regulations. Um, another example is like seatbelts, right? Maybe it's a good thing <laughs> that we force people to wear seatbelts, you know, M maybe not. The, the, the jury is still out. We'll, we'll find out after we look at what? The data, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll well, collect and, the data and figure it out. <laughs> and I think the regulations that are popping up are really, um, kind of at the center of this whole data ethics conversation as well. You know, people talking about what what's the right usage of data and how should it be used. Yeah, HIPAA and, you know, um and, you know, PCI and and some of those ones are around definitely making data uh, portable and and interoperable and able to talk to each other. Uh but the GDPR, which a lot of organizations do see that as a problem, a, a data problem is actually really around how data is used, you know, and I think that it's actually a good perspective and a good counter to this attitude around big data that we've had for the past, oh, 10 years or so that's been, well, we just need to capture all the data we possibly can 
Uh, who cares what we do with it? Who cares uh, whose it is, right? <laughs> but we need it somewhere for us to analyze it later. That that attitude has actually gotten us to the place where a lot of organizations feel kind of like they're that uh, they're that shipwrecked sailor on a life raft after the, their ship sunk, right? There's there's water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. You know, you have the same thing going on in our businesses. Data is everywhere, and increasingly, data is kind of available from you know social or search feeds in real time. That's someone else's data, right? And if the data is you know not accessible, or if we have duplicate data, or if it's against you know the the freedom of of that individual's privacy to use that data, then uh, we sh- you know we we need to know how to leverage it for its intended purpose. I guess is what I'm getting at. You know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It, there's a there's a fine line between data and information because it it, it crosses uh, at times where sometimes data can be information. And then sometimes the information we get is just data. It, it needs to be cleansed. It needs to be filtered. It needs to be seen uh, from the right perspective. Um, your example is great because just because you've got water all around you, uh, it may not be suitable for drinking. <laughs> uh, yeah. Same way with data. Just because you've got a lot of data, it all may be rubbish. There may be just a few components, a few elements within that data that you're looking for. And that sort of needle in a haystack is really why you have to pay folks to get it right. Uh, It's really why you hire experts uh, to find these things out for you, to see the patterns and data so that you're not spending your time sifting through data. You really want to spend your time uh, as a business owner making decisions. And so that becomes a matter of getting the right elements of data. Um, it reminds me of a, uh, a great quote. Uh, your thinking is very deep, but it's drowning in misinformation, right? <laughs> so um, just because you're thinking and you've got all these data points, well, if the data's wrong, then it's just going to be reflected in any decision you make based off of that data. Yeah, so, the garbage in, garbage out. Absolutely, absolutely. It's very important to surround yourself with the right data elements, then you're going to make, make the right decisions. Yeah. I would say, you know, if, if your company really doesn't have a data quality or a master data management commitment, it's valuable to invest the time to evaluate your data for errors. And, you know, duplicate errors, incomplete or erroneous records. There are a ton of commercially available software applications out there that support that. And a lot of firms um, will draw on the expertise of, of data experts, uh, such as, you know, those that uh, we have at Test Global and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and a bunch of other firms that are out there to help people with with uh, their data quality issues, uh, and we can query the data, we can assess the data quality. Um, I think it's also important to consider external service providers who can really help cleanse your data for you, right? Uh, but the, the important thing there is to focus on continuously improving the quality of your data. Yes, I, you know what, that's one of the, the biggest advantages of companies like Tesh Global, and, and there's there's not a lot of them out there, and, and what I mean by that is they're solution-driven, okay? Tesh Global is going to provide you with a solution. That solution <laughs> may consist of different softwares. We are not a vendor of this software, that software. Uh, I come from the perspective of providing you with a solution. So if there's a better, faster, cheaper way uh, that's more efficient, uh, to solve your problems, uh, Tesh Global is a type of company that's going to do that. So that's why I love working with them. It's because of that angle. It's because of that approach. You're able to have confidence in them. You're able to actually use them um, without worrying about a different agenda. Their agenda is to identify your problems, solve your problems, and then scale your business so that you can actually develop the business, not data. That's something that somebody else as a professional should be doing. 
Um, you shouldn't be in there trying to fix your toilet. Get a plumber, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> hire, hire the right person for the job. And so that's why uh, I think this forum is really great because we're going to talk about some of the things that we can actually uh, give you as value. And, and this stuff is, is uh, absolutely free. Just listen. Um, that's all you got to do uh, is listen to what we're talking about here, and it'll bring up some key points that you can then address within your organization. And if you need some help, now you know where to go. Sure. Yeah, and, I, and I'm always sensitive, you know, full disclosure, you know, that we, we both work at Tesh Global. We, you know, they're sponsoring this podcast. We, we really want to be topic focused so that you can have as much uh, value out of this podcast as possible. But just, you know, we're going to put it out there, you know, when there's an opportunity. We are here to help and we're available if you want to use our services in order for us to kind of help address some of the challenges you have. I think another thing, you know, I always advocate for is, you know, a stronger data quality and management effort, right? That work has often been the domain of IT or technical professionals, right? But but data has the potential to serve really as a strategic asset. So so I think it's important that every manager, you know, in an organization really cares about their firm's ability to leverage data, right? And that there, there's this organization-wide attitude toward treating data as a valuable asset. Yeah, it, it, it's, imp it's important to have the right folks in the room, but I think everybody's going to benefit from better data. I mean, uh, let, let's be honest, not everybody in the world uh, is ever going to agree, uh, agree on the same topics, right? Everybody's got a different approach. Uh, everybody wants to solve the problem um, their own way. And that's fine. But the bottom line is at the end of the day, if there's something that's good, it's good <laughs> and it works. And that's what we really want to make sure uh, people are understanding. There are just some things that you should be doing that are just going to be good uh, for you. And if it's something that, you know, from your paradigm doesn't work for you, let's figure out why and what does work for you everybody's situation is different so that's why when it comes to data get the folks in the room who actually can make a difference um, look at your organization define those data folks and when i say data folks they could be on the business side they could be on the human resource side absolutely what i mean by data folks is that you don't want to just use a data scientist that's coming from one perspective and one perspective only allow everybody to have their own kind of insight into the data and then you're going to find out that your company is going to get a lot more value out of your data than just by looking uh, at your data from a database administrator or a data scientist who's going to tell you, you know, uh, the length of your records and, you know, how many records you have in each database. <laughs> Those things may be a lot less important uh, in driving your business to profitability um, than actually looking at some of the information and some of the business intelligence components uh, that you should be implementing. Yeah, well, I think a perfect example of that, Wayne, is you know, sales and marketing departments really understand, in my opinion, the, the power of being able to in, engage uh, people who are skilled in the latest technologies and who are really good at navigating a lot of the data challenges that we've talked about here, right? So technology and data aren't really the domain or responsibility of a single function in an enterprise. It's important to have technical and data savvy people with talent kind of everywhere right in any team and i and i think the bottom line right is that you know the the fir the companies the managers the people who learn how to leverage data to make better decisions they're going to win right and and organizations uh are going to be able to monitor and respond to changing conditions they'll be able to uh uh, respond to different customer needs faster than people who are still struggling with their data, right? And they're going to be able to be the first people to get insights uh, into a customer from you know social media 
or uh, really to uh, you know know and engage those customers at a deeper level, all kind of based on the data. So you know it's not so much a fad, but it's really the new reality of you know how to how to manage and how to compete in today's world. And uh, you know we just want to make sure that all you guys who are listening are uh, able to avoid the pitfalls that uh, happen on that journey. Very true. Very true. And I, and I think we've covered quite a bit, too. Uh, you know, by looking at data quality, um, looking at who owns the data, whether it be an individual or a company, um, all of these things are so important when you start to understand uh, the data. Um, we also talked about some data variety. Um, these are things that I think that all play a role in your data, in your environment. And I think paying more attention to this is the beginning of you actually not only just understanding the data, but allowing you to leverage it properly. Absolutely. Well, hey, Wayne, I think we're starting to run out of time. So uh, I really appreciate you joining me for, uh, for this uh, podcast. And I think it was a really insightful discussion. Hopefully, uh, all of you who are listening found some value in it. Uh, and we look forward to uh, talking to you guys next week on The Data Swamp.